Effective employee management is the key to building a solid business that doesn't require to be there every single minute to oversee everything. I think you all could just uh, take off now. Michael, this shouldn't take more than an hour. Well... Do you always shut down the entire office when you leave for an hour? No. No, that would not be efficient. Actually, they just don't get very much work done when I'm not here. That's not true. I know how to delegate, and they do more work when I'm not here. Not more. The same amount of work is done whether I am here or not. You want to eventually build a team that can run the food truck entirely without you so that you can take care of big picture stuff like business expansion, menu expansion, and so on. Let's first tackle a topic that all employers stress over, employee compensation. I'm a firm believer in paying yourself last. In other words, your salary should be the lowest one on the truck. Of course, you get to keep all the profits at the end of the year, but on a weekly or monthly basis, you should not be taking a high salary. Because the only way to understand if you're paying your employees enough is by putting yourself in their shoes. How can you expect to know what it feels like to have to come to work when it's over 100 degrees inside the food truck, with barely any move to move around, grease splattering everywhere, no break room, no AC, never hearing a thank you from any of the customers, and getting paid $10 an hour unless you subject yourself to the same conditions. Don't think for a second that you deserve to get paid more because I'm about, I'm about, bitch, I'm about, I'm about. or because you work harder than anyone on the truck. Of course you should be working harder than anyone else on the truck. It's your truck. You own it. Your employees are just employees. If they fail at their job and you fire them, they can find another job in a day or two. If you fail at your job, you lose your entire business. But what about in the beginning when I have only a few customers a day? I can't afford to pay that much to an employee. Ain't nobody got time for that. That's why you need at least three months, but preferably six months of working capital. It's precisely for the first few months when business is growing and you can't fully cover all your expenses from your sales. Our current manager, Danny, has been with us for almost the beginning of Yumpling, and she's proved to be an integral part of our team, which is why we told her, I am promoting you from assistant to the regional manager to assistant regional manager. So I guess this will just be my office. No, no, title change only. I'll have Pam send out a memo. No, no. Three month probationary period. Let's just not tell anybody about this right now. Just a formality. Absolutely, but not really. And eventually became general manager. But on her first day of work, we served a total of seven customers. I was actually afraid she would quit the next day because if I were her, I'd be worried about not getting paid. Thankfully, she didn't quit. But if we hadn't properly budgeted enough working capital, we may have lost one of our most valuable team members. What I'm saying might not resonate with you if you haven't started operating your food truck yet. But once you start the hiring and training process, you'll very quickly learn that finding and retaining good talent is extremely hard. And one of the most common mistakes I see with a lot of small business owners is not paying enough to the really talented employees just so they can maximize their short-term gain. Instead of trying to make more money by paying your employees less, Focus on training and keeping higher paid employees who will work harder and sell more food. Where to your mother? If you require your employees to have the proper mobile food handler's license, I would also pay them above minimum wage. Look at it from the employee standpoint. They can get a similar job at any restaurant for the same pay, but they won't need to deal with the licensing process or be subject to the physical difficulties of working on a truck. It's fine to start out everyone at the same base rate of pay, whether it's minimum wage or higher. But once you observe how they work for the first few weeks or the first few months, you should quickly give raises to your standout performers. These are the employees who are quick learners, respectful, responsible, and show initiative. You can combine these raises with the standard time-based raise that most companies give. So for example, let's say you hire two people, John and Jane, and both $10 an hour. Within the first month, John has nearly mastered everything you've taught him, while Jane is still struggling with a few things. So in the third month, you give John a raise to $11 an hour, while Jane is still at $10. At the six month mark, you give both a dollar raise. So John is now at $12 and Jane is at 11. At nine months, John is good enough to open the truck on his own. So you give him another raise to $13 an hour. And finally, at the one year mark, you give both another standard dollar raise. So John now gets 14 and Jane gets 12. I've never given performance bonuses at either my education services company or on the food truck because it's so hard to gauge an appropriate amount and how much everyone contributed to the result. For example, let's say your truck sets a new sales record for the month. Get the party started. Not the way I taught you. Your team consists of you, an assistant manager who's been with you for a year, an employee who's also at a year, 
and another employee at four months. Should you give a bigger bonus to the assistant manager because he has the highest position? But what about the employee who's been there just as long as the assistant manager? Are you going to give a bonus every time a new sales record is broken? There are just so many things to think about for one-time bonuses. You got a bonus check. How much? Um, it wasn't, it wasn't that much, it was 3,000. <laughs> All right, I'm done now. I find it much simpler to give raises and promotions when necessary, instead of calculating separate bonuses each time. Several months later. Eventually, you'll want to promote one of your employees to a managerial position. How will you know when it's time? Your truck will one day reach maximum capacity. In other words, there will be so many customers that no matter how many people are on the truck at one time, you simply won't be able to sell any faster. Our max capacity is six people. Another truck might need four or five people. Ideally, you should start training a manager to take your place when you start approaching 70 to 80% capacity. The manager should know how to operate every station on the truck, how to open, how to close, what to do at commissary, how to handle emergencies, and so on. Once you feel your manager is fully trained, you should take the role of an employee and work wherever needed. Obviously, you should give your manager a generous raise because he's now responsible for everyone and everything on your food truck. Thousands of tears later. When you reach max capacity, you should start training an assistant manager who knows how to do everything from opening truck to the end of service, or from the start of service to the finishing at the commissary. Later on, when you feel you're ready for expansion, find a replacement for yourself so that you can focus on your expansion plans. If during this time your manager is sick or goes on vacation, your assistant manager can cover all necessary duties, except for either the opening procedures or the commissary procedures. Also, even though you may have a full team that can operate on their own, have regular check-ins with your manager to make sure everything is running properly and everyone is adhering to the standards you set. Finally, you always wanna have open communication with your team and within your team. And as the boss, it's your job to facilitate that kind of environment. You can do this by being right in the middle of what I like to call the respect scale. It's basically like the pH scale you learned about in chemistry class, except instead of measuring how acidic or basic something is, it measures your management style. Just like on the actual pH scale, on the respect scale, you wanna be at or near the seven mark, which is the perfect combination of being nice and strict. You should be nice during 80% of your interactions at work so that you can build a rapport with your employees and make them feel comfortable coming to you directly about a complaint or to get advice. You can be strict in the remaining 20% of the time when you need to address a specific problem, such as lateness or sloppy food standards. It's all about finding that right balance. Sometimes you have to take a break from being the kind of boss that's always trying to teach people things. Sometimes you have to just be the boss of dancing. In my experience, most managers tend to fall in the 9 to 11 range, or very strict to borderline scary. They're basically like Asian parents. You doctor yet? No, dad, I'm 12. Talk to me when you doctor. They'll provide for you and give you the direction that you need in the beginning, but after that, the only time they'll talk to you is to criticize your performance. The problem is, if you're strict all the time, your employees will find it very hard to come to you for support, to ask questions, or to make suggestions. Sure, they'll listen to you, but they definitely won't enjoy working for you. A very simple test to see if you fall into this category is if you give your employees more criticisms or corrective advice than compliments. And giving a compliment right before you give a criticism doesn't count as a compliment. I'm going to do something I call the compliment sandwich, where I say something good, then talk about where you need improvement, and then end with something good. If you find yourself in this category of management style, practice giving compliments to your employees on a regular basis. Since it won't come naturally, you could schedule it on your calendar. I know it sounds kind of funny, but trust me, it's a really effective way. And remember, a compliment doesn't have to be a long-winded talk about how great they are and how much you appreciate them. Just a simple, great job, or that looks good, is enough. The far right side of the scale consists of the really scary managers. These people will openly yell at and disrespect their employees, not caring who's around to hear it. I'm talking to you, Katie. Okay. Katie, listen to me when I'm speaking to you. Do not walk away from me. You don't work here anymore, okay? Don't start crying. Don't Why are you behaving like this? Oh my God. Since I'm talking to you, I wasn't doing anything. I wasn't doing anything. You've got an attitude with me all night long, Katie. Okay, please. Employee turnover is extremely high when you have a scary manager. If you're a scary manager, get some anger management counseling. Seriously. If you're screaming at the top of your lungs because an employee forgot the pickles in a burger order, you really do need to get professional help. 
On the left side of the scale, we have the nice managers. Managers can fall into this category by trying too hard to fit in with their employees to be their friend and by not giving them discipline when necessary. It can also happen if a manager just isn't comfortable dealing with conflict or tension. Nice managers are easy to talk to, well-liked, but sometimes the employees will take advantage of them. If there's a job that nobody particularly likes doing, like washing dishes or taking out the garbage, the employee you assign to it may make some excuse so that you eventually end up doing it yourself. Employees might start showing up late to work or taking off early because they know you'll let it slide as long as they act all buddy-buddy with you. If you try to get serious with them, they'll be like, You jerk! I thought we were friends! I thought we were friends. The only way to get out of being a nice manager is to be firm when you ask your employees to do or not do something. If you're just a very nervous speaker and don't like conflict, even the thought of confronting a disrespectful employee might make you sweat. Therefore, plan exactly what you want to say beforehand. Imagine you're standing in front of the person and practice talking out loud. The far left of the scale consists of the pushovers. The business is basically like a playground, except your employees get paid to be there. If this sounds like your situation, it's more of a self-confidence issue than a management issue. And unfortunately, it goes kind of beyond the scope of this course. I suggest spending a lot of time building up your confidence, practicing public speaking, and putting yourself in uncomfortable or awkward situations and forcing yourself to deal with them. Hi. Hello. Hey. How's it going? Good, how are you? Good. <laughs> um, can I kiss you? Sure. Is that all?